Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing a review for DC's Year of the Villain, issue 1. So this is a 25 uh, cent issue building up to this yearly villain event coming up for DC Comics. And we have some top writers here, James Tynion, Scott Snyder, um, Brian Michael Bendis, to launch this new um, event type series. So what I think of the issue. So I will say I think the first two stories are a bit stronger than the third. Uh, with the copy I read, I did not see the creative teams for each, so I don't even know which uh, writer wrote which, even though the middle one I know is Bendis. I have a feeling Scott Snyder wrote the last one, and James Tynion probably wrote the first one. Um, but yeah, the first one is Lex Luthor kind of preparing for this event and saying, hey, let's get a team of villains, and this is going to be epic. So, and him teaming up with Brainiac was kind of interesting. It took a while for that lead up to happen though, and it was mostly for the cliffhanger. But uh, one thing I'll say about this book, the artwork is top notch in literally every story, which is so nice to see in an anthology book like this, or, you know, a book that has multiple stories. Sometimes like, oh, I like the art there. Ooh, I didn't really like the art there. But this is very consistent top art, you know, top artists of DC uh, working on these stories. So um, that's something I really enjoyed. Now, the story I enjoyed the most here that uh, kind of gives me to the, gets me to the three and a half level rating I'm giving this book is uh, Brian Michael Bendis' story uh, with uh, Leviation, uh, Levathon, Levathon, I believe is uh, the event. Um, and, and we get to see Green Arrow and Batgirl teaming up, which is an unusual dynamic that works. And Batgirl gets kidnapped by this guy who says, hey, you know, I, you know, I think you're, I kidnapped you for a reason and it wasn't Batman or, you know, Green Arrow. Um, you're or you're the best and how if I told you you could save people in a different way isn't that exactly what you want so it's kind of interesting that this villain's attacking them through the mind through their ideologies and like this is kind of interesting and then to have you know top-notch artists a uh, team that Bendis usually has um, it, it really made this issue uh, something worthwhile so I'm really excited for that event and I I like the direction they they took Barbara there so moving on to the last story is very Justice League source wall the, the, the Batman who uh, no laughs or whatever the, that character is called. Batman who laughs. Um, things I'm not really invested in. I didn't really like metal much. I'm not reading Justice League right now. So I think that was definitely more built for the Justice League members uh, or Justice League readers. Uh, I... I just wasn't really a fan of that one. I haven't been loving Snyder's version of Justice League. It just hasn't been my thing. Very over explainy, uh, very mythology heavy. Of like, let me you know explain about the source wall. So um, and again, I I just didn't really love metal either. So I haven't been following Batman who laughs. So um, yeah, it just wasn't my thing for that that last story. So uh, but overall, I'm gonna give this three and a half stars. Like I said, I thought the artwork was top notch in all three stories, which was really nice to see, and I really enjoyed that middle story the most. Uh, but I think there's definitely potential in that first story and that third one we'll see uh, yeah so that's my review for DC's year of the villain let me know in the comments below what did you think of the issue definitely go check out my uh, comics like Violet Daughter and They Call a Dancer my social media Twitter and Facebook all the links are in the description and also every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern time is Frontline Live where we discuss our favorite comics and comic book news so be sure to check that out as well so hopefully you guys enjoyed bye